Today we're taking a look at our brand new Canon EOS R macro reverse rings. Hey everyone, Sean here with photodeox.com and today we're announcing our new Canon EOS R macro reverse rings. Macro reverse rings allow you to mount a lens on your digital camera backwards. And this turns any lens that you mount backwards into a macro focus only lens. And this is great if you want to shoot macro photography, but you don't want to buy an expensive macro lens. With macro reverse rings, pretty much any lens you have can be turned into a macro focus lens. We currently carry eight Canon EOS R macro reverse rings in standard filter thread sizes. Picking a macro reverse ring for your Canon EOS R camera is super simple. Uh, just take your lens and figure out what the front filter thread size is. Uh, this lens is a 52 millimeter, so we're just gonna take our 52 millimeter macro reverse ring and we're gonna take the thread on the front of it and thread it on to the front of our lens, uh, just like you would thread a filter onto the front. Once it's tight, we're gonna find the red mounting dot on the back of the ring. We're gonna line it up with the red mounting dot on our Canon EOS R camera, put them together, and then turn it to lock it into place. Now, if we turn the camera on and we point it at the subject, uh, in this case, this little Bugs Bunny Lego guy, and just like that, we've got a macro focus lens. Now, one quick note, if you are using a Canon EOS R lens or a more modern Canon EF lens on the macro reverse ring, uh, you won't have any control over focus. Uh, this is because modern lenses are focused by wire only. Uh, that basically means you need electronic communication between your camera and lens to adjust the focus. And since there's no electronic communication uh, in our macro rings, you will be limited to one focus. So basically, rather than turning the lens to focus, you're gonna move the camera backwards and forwards to focus. Basically, your lens is stuck to one macro focus point uh, with a macro reverse ring. Also with Canon EF and Canon EOS R lenses, when you take the lens off your Canon camera, the aperture automatically locks wide open. So when you're adapting these types of lenses to our manual macro reverse rings, uh, you are stuck to the widest, fastest aperture of your lens. That's the only aperture you can have. So as you'll see, as I photograph this Bugs Bunny, it's super shallow depth of field. Uh, his face is in focus. Everything behind him is out of focus. Here's some photos I captured with this 24 millimeter EF lens uh, mounted on this EOS R6. And as you can see, they're all very shallow depth of field uh, because this is an F2.8 lens. So all of the images are shot at F2.8. So there's a very narrow sliver of focus. But this can be pretty beautiful for macro photography, especially if you're shooting flowers and you just wanna focus on one very specific detail in the macro shot. Now, if you want to have more control of aperture and focus with macro reverse rings, I would recommend using a manual lens, either a vintage manual lens, or in this case, a modern lens baby manual lens. Uh, this lens has full aperture control and full focus control. And this lens has a 62 millimeter front thread. So we'll use our 62 millimeter Canon EOS R macro reverse ring thread it onto the front of the lens, mount it to the Canon EOS R camera, and let's photograph our Lego Bugs Bunny again, and you'll see with this setup, much more is in focus. It's more sharp because the depth of field is wider. And I took this setup out as well and did some macro photography of flowers, and as you can see with these shots as well, much more is in focus. They're much more usable shots uh, because there's way more detail. Uh, because I have the control of the aperture, I can shoot at F11, F16. I can just get sharper macro images. You can actually see the comparison between using this fully auto lens and this manual lens uh, on this flower shot. Uh, with this lens, I am just getting very, very limited detail on part of the flower, whereas with this manual lens at F11, most of the flower is in focus. So again, if you're using macro reverse rings, if you want more control, definitely try to go with manual lenses. Uh, but if you're okay with having shallow depth of field focus, especially if your lens is like an F4 or something, not as wide open, uh, definitely consider just using it with your standard Canon EOS R lenses. Now, if you're using modern Nikon lenses, uh, like this Nikon AFS Nikkor 50 millimeter F1.4 G, uh, this has a 58 millimeter thread. So let's mount the macro reverse ring on the front of the lens here, thread it into place, mount it on the camera. Now this lens does not have 
manual aperture control. There's no aperture ring, but it does have a manual aperture control lever that if you adjust, you can control the aperture. Now it's spring loaded to communicate with the Nikon camera. So it's a bit of a pain to photograph where you have to like use your finger. But Photodeox offers a special adapter that actually goes on the front of a reversed Nikon lens. And there's a ring on the front of this adapter that when you turn it, you can manually adjust the aperture of the Nikon lens and keep it wherever you adjust it to. So if you are using a Nikon G lens on a macro reverse ring, this is a great little extra thing to purchase to give you aperture control. Okay, that was a quick look at our brand new Canon EOS R macro reverse rings. Now, if you have any questions about these reverse rings, which ones you need for your lens and your camera, comment below, I'd love to help you out. Also click the links in the description below to get your Canon EOS R macro reverse ring today and click right here to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos just like this one. I'm Sean with photodeox.com and happy macro photography.